this layout is starting to get quite busy and I'm getting quite frustrated with myself for the amount of short circuits, derailments and uh, general mistakes, collisions that I'm making due to lack of attention and not watching what's where and what's happening. And I've started looking into something I can do to at least warn me when one of those things is imminent so I can dash to the, <laughs> to the controller and stop all the trains. This area at this end has kind of become where I uh, control all, all the trains from. Um, and so I've, I've written a piece of software and it's running along here now. It's all thankfully all green at the minute, which tracks all the trains on the, that are moving on the layer. They don't need to be automated and be just controlled by me with a, um, a, a throttle. And, and they, they work out based on the, the state of the, the layer and the direction the train's going in. Uh, they, they work out if there's any danger ahead in the next two blocks, just like a, a signalling system, really. Um, at the minute, everything's green, but if, for example, I turn a set of points here against the anti-clockwise train that's just making its way around here, so it's about to enter the block down here, I suspect. There we go. What's happening now is I'm getting a caution warning. This isn't related to the signal mass logic or anything like that but I'm getting a caution warning that there's something bad going to happen in a few blocks time. And as it enters, there we go, as it enters the, the next block, um, if I can remember which throttle it's on, there is a red signal down there as well. So if I stop this train, come back up here, it's still telling me there's danger because nothing's happened. But then if I come over here and turn this turn out back, all of my alerts disappear. It tells me that I'm good to go again and I can get on with driving the train and um, avoid the potential hazard that was about to strike me. All of the lower deck, which is the bit I can't see for most of the time because it's under the upper deck, has block detection on it. And it, it did become a bit frustrating that it seemed the only purpose of block detection was for automated trains okay there is there's signal mass logic set up and there are um, signal icons on this screen but i've really got to go out of my way to be able to spot them the, the signals are kind of way down behind there which i can't see and the signal icons here i've really kind of got to have an eye you know i've got to be watching closely to see what's happening and something that that happened regularly down here i've got the back end of a class 91 train now the the local at the front of this train is a nice newfangled Hornby one that I bought a year or two ago. But the rest of the train I haven't got round to upgrading yet, so it's still the really old 90s Mark IV uh, uh, coaches and the, the little runty thing on the, on the end. And these are effectively toys. And the couplings on them are absolutely terrible for all kinds of reasons. They kind of wobble, so they end up at different heights. They mount each other, cause derailments and all kinds of things that... that no software is going to fix. But another thing that they regularly do is they uncouple. So something that regularly happens and, and was really frustrating, particularly because I had block detection installed and working, was that at, at random points, and I wouldn't notice, this Class 91 would shed the DVT, and I've put um, resistive wheel sets on it as well, so it, it is detected, but I still wouldn't spot it until there was a massive clunk of the nice new class 91 coming all the way around and smashing into the the back of the the, the runty old one so again that's something that, that this software should be able to to detect so I'm, I'm going to come over here i'm going to set the 91 off where it is there it is so it's going off around now i won't send it too fast because i'm going to have to react pretty quickly and it's left it's uh runty end bit on the track and because the runty end bit has got uh, resistive wheel sets this uh, block has stayed occupied whereas we can see that the trains moving its way around but now what I should do I think once it enters this block actually which will be shortly I should start getting warnings because it can predict that, that here we go that there's going to be a, 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 a collision so that's the block that got activated. That's what it thinks going to happen. And this is the block it thinks it's going to happen in. And I'm going to have to get around to stopping it very quickly because there we go. Uh, because there, there will be a, a collision. So um, because I got the 
the, the warning. I managed to stop the train. It'll just be down there somewhere. I can't see it. Oh yeah, pretty close. There it is. So it's going to keep going at me because there is still a potential collision, but uh, because it sort of checks all of its alerts regularly, if I just pick this thing up off the track, I think very shortly what should happen, there we go, it'll work out that the block went unoccupied and, and clear me to progress again. I like it too when I get unexpected benefits from things. You set out to, to create something and it, it ends up being more than, than you intended it to be. And an example here is the, uh, I've got this super sprinter that's running around uh, the layout here. But I want to bring it into the yard and I want to bring the 91 out. Um, problem of course is the 91 is right at the back and there's space at the front. So I need to shunt the 91 up. So if I come here and get hold of my class 91, and there it is, and just start budging it up, the, the track or the, the set of points at the end of the yard is set against that 91 because the yard is closed because there's a train running it and the anti-clockwise line so I don't know if that was audible as it pulled up it I got this warning here uh, because the the, the um, yard is closed against it so it kind of acted as a bit of a parking sensor so I knew when to stop the thing when it was in the right block um, the thing with this one of course is because the train is still in that block and the points are still turned against it this uh, alert will will continue so I've got an acknowledge button here because the trains parked I'm happy with where it is there's no danger anymore the trains not moving so I can just click that acknowledge button and uh, the, uh, the the warning is cleared the super sprint is making its way around now and I'm going to bring it into the yard so if I set the uh, the route for I can never remember which one it is I suspect it's going to be line three the points get set and this system will now pick up that the super sprint is going to take a different route and also that it is going to collide because the, thankfully it was line three it's going to come into the yard and there is a potential collision in ac line three block two because that's where the the 91 is so again if i've left the yard open by accident if there's a train just running around it's going to shunt in the back of something when it gets in here because the yard's full of trains so again with the the super sprinter making its way around now what I should get as it enters the the yard and we'll see it kind of enter the yard here again I'm I'm getting these collision warnings so and I need to do it quickly it should go to red as soon as it hits the sensor behind <laughs> I didn't stop it in time but there is my uh, warning about the collision which even with um, uh, all this this early warning system I still managed to uh, to cause. Something I particularly uh, designed this for was was for more accurate stopping at signals I guess and, and what I mean by that is I've got these two trains working their way around on the lower deck there's the uh, the little twin pacer there and the class 91 now all um, recoupled is working its way around uh, the anti-clockwise line but I want to take the, the class 91 up to the top deck. And in order to do that, it's going to have to cross the clockwise line that the twin pace is on because the incline uh, star is, is the other side of that. So I've got the, you know, I, 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 for a while I've had the signal mass logic working and, and, and everything like that. And it, it's, I can't do it this lap because the, the two of them are, are, are crossing there. Um, but Again, it's spotting the signals, and there's so many of these little signal icons around the place because it, it's it's a you know it's quite a packed thing. I can't really tell um, which signal is is the, the the one that I want. So now that's cleared, I'm I'm going to set these um, points, and that'll take this class 91 that's just passing down here out onto the upper deck, and that's it. That's all I'm going to do. Now it's going to inconvenience the. Uh, the the twin piercer which has disappeared which is worry a worry as it's stalled is it gonna come back to no nope, it's still coming back to life I think there must be a sensor missing down there I'll have to go and check that but anyway it's activated this line now but immediately again I've got this warning it's telling me that it's thrown against I can see it coming around here it's gonna have a short circuit so as soon as I get the uh, the, the danger alert which I should get there we go 
I can stop this train. But what that means, of course, is it's stopped, actually passed the signal because it's moved into the block, but it's stopped before the 91, which is now coming across, went up the hill. And as soon as that 91 has cleared those turnouts, I can set these back again and the alert has immediately cleared because the points are no longer set against the train and I can come back and, and get it moving again as the 91 makes its way up the hill. I'm going to try as brief a word as possible without any mention of cord for how it's doing this then. So I say this is my layout, everything's just been turned on and there's a train in this this um, line here and it's going to head off in, in this direction. So first thing would happen as the train starts moving, this block here becomes occupied and the software is monitoring all the time for new blocks that become occupied. It realises a new block has, be, has become occupied. Now the one thing you can guarantee when a train is moving and has just occupied a new block, you can almost guarantee first of all that the block it's come from in that instant that this block is becomes occupied is still occupied because the trade's just too long to jump out of one block instantly and into another one so we will always know one thing we can guarantee is the block it's come from will always be occupied when the new block becomes active so you've kind of got your start point there to determine direction okay what are the blocks that are attached to this block and which ones are occupied in this case there are three that are occupied and that doesn't really matter because we don't care where it's come from but importantly there is a route out here that is unoccupied so we kind of guess what the route is out and the, the kind of the the as technical as I'll get, the way it does that is when we create these these panels, we create little track segments and little sets of points and all these things, and they're all connected up together. If I right click on, say, this one, you can see it has two connections to an anchor point, and TO16 is on number two, and this is very probably going to be TO16. There it is. It's a it's a set of points. So as we draw this, this all gets written to an XML file and and stored it on on our hard drive of, of and and it tells JMRI as much as anything how everything's connected up and what what the route is. But we can read that and we can use it as well. So what it generally does is is it, as a start point, it just tries to grab a track. It, it knows a block has become occupied, so it tries to grab any track segment because every track segment records which block as do turnouts and everything else. Every component record which block they are in. So it says, okay, get me that, get me, get me every track segment in that block, and just pick one at random. And then each track segment has two connections in it. it has a, a, a connection one, a connection two, because a, a track segment has two ends to it, just like a piece of track is connected to two other pieces of track. So it says, okay, I can start making my way through this block now. I, I, if I come to a turnout, I'll, I'll work out the live state of that turnout. We do that from the JSON server, so I can work out how I need to exit that set of points. And I'll, I'll, I'll work my way through this block until I come to a track segment that has a different block name to the one I started with, the block that's just gone live. And once I do that, I know I'm at the edge of the block. I know I've come to the end of this block. And I will compare the name of the block I've just discovered with the as well as the block that's gone live, the block that I think I previously came from. Because if the block I've discovered is the same as the occupied block that I just came from, I've gone in the wrong direction. Because it can't determine, it can't, it can't guess what direction to go in. So it gets to here, it says, oh, oh, okay, I've gone in the wrong direction. So I'm going to go back through the block all the way to till I find an endpoint again. And I'm going to respect the state of the turnouts. I'm going to get the live state of these turnouts because they determine the direction the train will travel and I will keep going through this block until I come to another track segment that has another block name and if the block for the, the, the that I've just found on the end of this track segment is unoccupied then I'm I can assume I'm going in the right direction because I've worked out where the start of the block is I've worked out the trade's path through the block and I've now found a new block at the end of that so that's my new block and then once you've kind of written the code that does that you can just throw the next block in and throw the next block in and it will work out its path through there as well and what it does because it's looking at that uh, well there's two things it's looking at first of all it's looking at the life state of these these turnouts so say if it's if it's made its way around here if i turn this one this is a um a uh, uh 
crossover kind of going against it. So once it's worked its way around me and it's come around here, as it's gone through the blocks, it can also work out whether a turnout is turned against the direction of travel, because again, that's all, all in the config. So that's how it builds up its warnings and its and its danger signs. It says, okay, this 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 turnout is against the train. There's going to be a short circuit here, so I will I will if it's two blocks ahead, I will issue it as a caution alert the other thing it's doing of course is it's going out because it knows these these block names as it as it works its way through it can also check the live json server for the the occupancy status of the block and if it finds that a block two blocks ahead is occupied then it will issue a collision warning with an amber and as we get one more uh, one one block closer to it it will uh, issue uh, a, a danger and effectively that's that's all it's doing it's constantly it, it knows the next two blocks it's constantly monitoring those two blocks once it's established them because on a whim i might change a set of points to change the route of the train when it's just coming around here so it needs to change it, it's no longer it, it, it doesn't want to be checking for danger along here anymore it wants to be checking for danger along here and if i sit that set that means it's going up on the incline so oops, it would um just uh let's get out of edit mode before i make any drastic mistakes as i change these it will know i've changed them it will know it's part of its current plotted route so it will instead of checking for danger along here it will check for danger along here instead and in principle that's how it works something's happened then this this thing has evolved this thing has become different to what i originally intended it to be the first big shift was um the, the first idea was it was going to have to go through the the config to get to the point and in the in the kind of in the layout config where the signal mast was get the signal mast get its state and that's what it would use for the the caution and danger but in order to get to the signal mast it had to go through the config it had to go through each block in the path that the train was going in and and therefore it was possible as it went through i i thought oh it might be a good idea if 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 i can detect what the danger is in this block as well as returning the signal mast state i can return a reason why the signal mast is is how it is i realized what i got to that point once i got to the signal mast well i knew what the state of the signal mast would be because i'd worked it out in the two blocks leading up to it it you know if you know what the reason for the caution or danger will be you know it's going to be caution or danger so you don't actually need the signal mast so that was the first thing that shifted it and then the second thing that shifted it was Knowing the route that the train will take over the next few blocks, being able to predict where the train's going to go because, based on the live state of the layout. And that has opened up a whole new world um, and is very possibly going to be en going to enable me to do something that I fancied doing for a long time, but haven't been able to fathom how to do. And... That's what I'm moving on to next.